Hello, and welcome to our first episode of The Underground Studio, the show by filmmakers for filmmakers. My name's Jonathan Keeley. And I'm Morgan Sutton. Today we're going to be looking at a couple of our favourite movies. We'll also be looking at a little known television show, as well as reviewing a terrible movie for our Back of the Vault segment. That's right, Morgan. And a little later on, we'll also be looking at Build It Yourself by making cheap film equipment that you can do at home. For now, let's get right to the good stuff. Oz. That's the name on the street for the Oswald Maximum Security Penitentiary. Oz is retro. Oz is retribution. You want to punish a man? Separate him from his family. Separate him from himself. Cage him up with his own kind. Oh. Shit, shit, shit. Oz is a critically acclaimed HBO prison drama. It is set in an experimental unit at Oswald Penitentiary. Production-wise, Oz is visually stunning. The director has made great use of long tracking shots that prove to be very effective. This is certainly a trademark of the Oz production style, adding flair, originality and emotion to any scene. The makers of Oz have proved their technical ability and patience through the use of many impressive and rather challenging long shots many of which contain elaborate and difficult camera movements. They execute these shots with precision and excellent timing. Something that makes Oz enjoyable from a filmmaker's perspective is its use of unusual camera angles. Unlike most regular network dramas, the makers of Oz haven't been afraid to play around with the angles. So what we get is a finished product that is both visually appealing and narration friendly. Oz is clearly a premium cable television show. The makers have illustrated great technical ability and prowess. Nothing about this show is done crudely. There is great attention to detail. This is a fabulous television series and I'm recommending it to everyone who enjoys making films. Absolutely excellent. So Morgan, what did you think about Oz? Um, I, I love the show, you know, I, I actually only got into it recently, but um, you know, one thing I really like is they don't establish a scene with a wide shot. What they'll do mm. is they basically will establish it with a medium shot on a specific character within the scene and then track through and introduce all the characters. Mm. Yeah, like in, the, like in the first scene that we just saw, how the, they sort of dolly all the way in and it actually goes like through every character and then comes back out and it's just introducing like Tobias Beecher, one of the characters. That's it, and I think so the reason they do this is to basically, because the, um, the location is such a small place that yeah. they need to use this to make each scene different and interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so much better than just like a wide shot and then like come into like a mid and a close or something. I mean, it's, it makes it so much more like visually appealing, I think. It's fantastic. Yeah, I also like the, um, with the amount of audio that they use, uh, you know, it makes it seem very cold and a very harsh place to be and that yeah. really builds on. It's the really story. unsettling, isn't it? Like the noises that they use. I'm not sure that we actually had any in that clip, but the noises they use are just really unsettling, really eerie and stuff. So it makes you feel like you're actually sort of in the prison yourself. Yeah, no, it's, so. it's a fabulous, fabulous show. All right, so let's take a look at our next movie. Why are you going to make me feel so guilty, Ma? Jesus, what are you trying to do? You trying to get me to break my own mother's set? Or break the radiator? And maybe blow up the whole house, Ma? Is that what you're trying to do? Your own... Rec Room for a Dream explores the lives of four individuals in their downward spiral into chaos of body and mind. This movie has a power that is created through its visual style using techniques such as split screen, body cameras, time lapse and out of the norm camera movement and angles. The soundtrack that accompanies this movie is brilliant in its own right, but when perfectly meshed with the film's unique vision, it becomes a true masterpiece and is left burnt in the viewer's mind. The movie finishes with a display of editing genius, jumping between characters and revealing their increasingly dire circumstances, which results in a disturbing climax. This film will leave viewers in a state of mind not felt since Clockwork Orange. Rec Room for a Dream truly gets under your skin and stays there. So John, what, what was your, you know, your favourite element of the movie? Well, I just really like the, um, the length of the scenes. Um, at the start of the movie, the scenes are generally about 90 to seconds to two minutes long. And as the, scene, as the movie progresses, um, the scenes actually get shorter and we build to like that climax at the end where all the stories sort of you know, come together mm. and, and it's just chop, 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 chop. And that's what I think is like really good about yeah, it. Yeah, it really links the characters and they become, you know, they're, they're, their own worlds become closer together yeah, yeah. because of the fast editing and you know, you, they relate to each other a lot more through their addiction. And I think, yeah, it's a, it's a superb um, editing. 
process that we're. And what about the um the split screen as well? Like we saw in the clip we just we just saw then mm. the split screen where you have like the son on one side and the mother on the other side. And what's more, you have the audio coming from you know the left channel and the right channel for you know resp the respective um characters. So. Yeah, no, it's great. I think it um it focuses like you, you have to focus on two elements that are going on, which makes you know the show yeah. a lot more you know dramatic, and you know the basic. But I think feeling. because because also you see the reaction of. Of the mother when yeah. the son's like stealing her TV to you know, take to the pawn shop and you know get some money for crack or whatever. You know, another thing that you know with the audio, um, the uh, soundtrack that goes along with it as well is unbelievable. You can listen to that soundtrack after you've watched the movie, and you it evokes the same emotions as right. if you've watched the movie. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and quite a great film. I I really enjoyed it. Anyway. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but don't go anywhere because otherwise you never find out what we're going to review next. See you in a minute.